Welcome back to Mets and SPS D podcast for week two. Uh, week one was uh, pretty good. I broke even in DraftKings and profited uh, double what I put in in FanDuel. So hopefully that works out again. We had some good picks at quarterback, especially uh, Drew Brees came through. Emmanuel Sanders had 10 catches, 100 yards, and like a touchdown. That was a huge pick. Uh, Melvin Gordon was, uh, he got you 20 DK, 20 plus DK. So um, we're, we're back for week two. I'm back to give you that fire. And let's start off um, with the quarterback position. Um, this week, obviously, everyone saw the Pittsburgh Steelers struggle away in Cleveland. Um, that was obvious to me. Um, so I'm here for the back, the the bounce back with Ben Roethlisberger back home against Casey's defense, which is pretty bad. Um, if you just go by what Phillip Rivers did against this Kate, um, this Chiefs defense last week, he had 51 attempts, three touchdowns, uh, one interception, had 103 uh, percent QB rating. And got 32 DK. I'm pretty sure you'll be pretty happy if Ben Roethlisberger does that at home, which he usually does. He excels at home against a porous KC defense without Mar- – obviously, Marcus Peters is gone. Uh, I see huge, huge day for Juju Smith-Schuster and Antonio Brown. I'm trying to make sure I have that triple stack. And even some Vance McDonald's to throw in there. Uh, I really like Pittsburgh at home. They they tend to turn up, and they they like to put their foot on their opponent's throat and go full throttle. So that's my first QB selection, Ben Roethlisberger. I think he's going to have a huge day. The next is going to be Garoppolo. Um, this is all about redemption, um, bounce back. It wasn't fair that Jimmy Garoppolo faced the Minnesota Vikings at home in a home opener. It wasn't going to end up well. Not many quarterbacks go in there and do well. Uh, I think, was it last year, the most someone scored was 17 points in Minnesota. And if you look at the score right here, they only scored 16. So you don't really expect your quarterback to do well in Minnesota. But he is home this week and going against the Detroit Lions who got murdered by the Jets. And if Sam Darnold could have a decent day, I think Garoppolo can have an even better day. Uh, I really like this connection, Garoppolo with George Kittle. You should you should do that, definitely. Um, with the injury to Marquise Goodwin, uh, I like Garcon. He he's gonna see some coverage from Darius Slay, but Garcon is gonna move. He's gonna move to the slot and. And to the outside as well. He's a good option. But um, the dude that's going to start in the slot is going to be Dante Pettis, their rookie wide receiver, who they, they really love. And he had a good, he had a decent game last week. He got a touchdown against Minnesota, uh, two for five for 61 yards and a touchdown. He lost a fumble. It's kind of typical of a rookie. Uh, Dante Pettis is a sneaky option to have cheap to throw in your flex position if you need to save some salary, especially in your San Francisco stacks, okay? So this is, if you're going with Garoppolo, roll with this this three core right here. You can't go wrong. Also, um, I kind of like Matt Breida as well against Detroit. Matt Breida or Alfred Morris, you don't have to flip a coin with that one because they split carries. Uh, Matt Breida, to me, was just the more effective runner, um, just going by stats. Uh, 4.2 yards a carry, and he gets the the receiving yards. So that's going to be huge. That's why I chose Matt Breida instead of Alfred Morris in a PPR format that uh, DraftKings is. Um, my last quarterback that I really like is going to be Deshaun Watson. This is a little birthday narrative. Um, his birthday was this Friday, so I, I think he, he should. Hopefully he turns up and turns out against the Tennessee Titans. Uh, last year, one of his first games was against the Tennessee Titans, and that was the game he went off on. Went off on, and the Texans scored 53 points. So, um, Bill Belichick, mastermind defensively, uh, they kind of bottled him up. He, he had no Will Fuller, the Texans. So um, that's why, obviously, 
Bill Belichick focused in on DeAndre Hopkins and kind of limited the Texans' offense. So I, you know, he, that's why he had an okay day with 13 fantasy points. But he should bounce back against the the injured weekend, the Tennessee Titans. Um, and D Hop and Will Fuller should be healthy for this game. I'm definitely gonna have that three man stack: Deshaun Watson, Will Fuller, and DeAndre Hopkins. Just because what they did against them last year and that combination is hard to stop. I get it. The Tennessee Titans have improved in the secondary, but it did not help last week when they got destroyed by Kenny Stills on two plus occasions. And you got if you got Will Fuller speed on Will Fuller speed on the on the football field, then you got you got even more of a problem. Uh, so that was my last QB option for running back. I'm going to start off with Adrian Peterson. It's better to use this man now before the end of the season, before he gets tired or whatever happens, he starts to deteriorate. But he has a prime matchup against the Indianapolis Colts. I picked on the Indianapolis Colts last week, and I'm going to pick on again, pick on him again this week. Adrian Peterson looked fierce. He looked uh, prime. It was the type of runs he was, the force and the momentum. He was busting through the holes last week against the Arizona Cardinals defense, which is competent. Um, now he gets to go against, uh, uh, what is there? They're like 25th ranked against the run. If I could check here. Let's see. Against the rush. Indianapolis Colts are... Uh, they're 10th, but that... That's wrong. That was last year. But um, this is a very bad defense. Adrian Peterson should go off. I don't. I think he should duplicate the 23, the 20 points plus DK. And at 5,500, that, that's a steal. He's going to get most of the workload. They should be up their home. I don't think uh, Chris Thompson will be that big of a factor because um, they shouldn't be down in this game against the Colts. All right, that's my first option at running back. My second option is going to be a plug and play. This is going to be uh, Freeman is out, so you got to play Coleman. Uh, when Col- when Freeman is out, Tevin Coleman becomes the number one back. He's going to get all the workload. It's going it's like uh, this is like Le'Veon Bell out, and then James Conner comes in and he gets all the work. It's going to be similar to that. Tevin Coleman is going to run through the tackles and is going to catch a ton of balls. Um, Falcons are home. They need this win after that debacle in Philadelphia. Uh, I think they they ride Coleman and really um, exploit the Panthers secondary, which Dallas wasn't able to, but the Atlanta Falcons can with Julio Jones. And that's going to leave plenty of room up front for Tevin Coleman to roam or even catch balls. Uh, Now on to the wide receivers. My favorite, favorite wide receiver is going to be Nelson Aguilar. Uh, Tampa Bay has a huge problem. They have no Brent Grimes, no Vernon Hargraves. So you're looking at the backups backup to stop this Philadelphia Eagles wide receiving core. this man on game one in his first game had eight catches, 10 targets. I get it, 33 yards. But just that volume in itself, those yards are going to go up. Those yards are going to go up. And he got rushing attempts. So this is uh, Nick Foles' favorite target, him and Zach Ertz. Make sure you have both of them. I love Ertz as well. Um, but my wide receiver that I love at 6,100, is Nelson Aguilar. I'm trying to have him most in majority of my lineups. He's just the target monster. Um, and Tampa Bay has no corners. And if you want to throw a deep shot, there have been talks um, about the, how they want to use Mike Wallace more. And this is like the perfect opportunity. You're down to your third, fourth string cornerback. And, you know, a deep ball to Mike Wallace will not hurt. Let's go to the next choice. I'm going to go with attacking injuries right here. So with Greg Olson out, um, I'm going with Devin Funches. 
So you can do a game stack. Like I said, I like Tevin Coleman with Julio Jones, and then you can bring that back with the Devin Funches at wide receiver to get a little game stack going on right there. And you just pick either quarterback. If you want the rushing upside of Cam or the passing upside of Matt Ryan. So Devin Fushin is at 4,700, the number one target. When Greg Olson was out, he became an elite wide receiver, uh, snagging most of the targets. Uh, this is just a smart play. You just take that 4,700 salary and spend up somewhere else and get you a number one wide receiver. Um, we're going to move on to tight end. Tight end, I'm going to stick with my boy. I like Ertz, I already said, but I'm going to stick with my boy, uh, Ricky Seals-Jones. He got 4.9 last week. He had six targets, three catches. But what you didn't watch was that he dropped a touchdown. So if he, if he had a touchdown at 2,900, you know, he, he paid, paid his salary and, and, and spade. So uh, if, he didn't, if he just caught that one touchdown, um, he had Josh Norman, Josh Norman coverage on him. Uh, he would have had a fine DK day and really boosted up all your lineups. But uh, no Jermaine Gresham. He's going to get all the snaps. He got 92% of the snaps last week. He's going to get the same amount this week. The Rams gave up uh, 180 yards to, to Jared Cook. And they might do the same because with the Rams defense, they're going to stop your one and two options, but they can't stop everything. And they're going to need – Arizona's going to need to move the ball and lean on Ricky Seals-Jones as Derek Carr leaned on Jared Cook. They're about the same body type, and they're both freak athletes. With no Mark Barron at linebacker, um, the coverage on tight end is very weak in for the uh, Los Angeles Rams. Uh, my next last choice, I'm going to go with Jimmy Graham. I get it. It's Minnesota's defense, but Minnesota can't stop everything. They got Xavier Rose that's going to guard Devonta Adams. Trey Waynes is going to possibly be on uh, Geronimo Allison and their slot corner. Let's check. Let's check. Let's go. This is Fantasy Labs. I like to see the matchups. I need to go to the Packers. All right. Uh, okay, they're going to have Alexander on Cobb. I like them. I like Cobb this week uh, because Xavier, Xavier Rose is going to pretty much lock down Adams. Um, and it's going to also leave Jimmy Graham free in the middle to take advantage of uh, Anthony Barr or, or Harrison Smith. They, as long as Aaron Rodgers plays, I'm going to go with Jimmy Graham at uh, tight end. And I expect a touchdown this week. Uh, it's a tough matchup. Everyone's not. He's going to be solo on. But I really I really think uh, Green Bay at home, when they're in a the red zone, he's going to really take advantage of uh, his biggest target that he has in Jimmy Graham. All right, so those are the week two picks. Uh, I want to wish you guys the best. Hopefully we uh, take down a GPP. And if I do, I'll definitely do a video on that. Um, I want to go over my picks again. I said Jimmy Garoppolo at QB, Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, Deshaun Watson at QB, birthday narrative. Um, I love Tevin Coleman. Adrian Peterson at running back. Nelson Aguilar. Devin Funches. Ricky Seals-Jones. And Jimmy Graham. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to my channel at MetsNetsSD on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, click like, leave a comment. I need feedback from you guys. If you support or do not support me, it doesn't matter. I'll take negative criticism. And uh, make sure you follow me on Twitter at MetsNetsJetsD. All right. Uh, good luck, everyone, this week. See you next week. And uh, it's out.